Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We're continuing on our pandemic projects. Unfortunately, this is going on three months now, and who would have ever thought that that would be the case? We would have hoped that uh, this would have come and gone, but it hasn't. And uh, we're continuing to, uh, to try and uh, keep everybody entertained while we all work our way through this. Speaking of working our way through this, uh, thank you to all of the uh, first line responders, emergency personnel, uh, essential personnel and so on that are that are out there putting their lives on the line trying to keep us safe and work for the solutions that are needed to help end this pandemic. So I've been doing these, trying to do these on a daily basis, which is not easy. And I can only imagine what it is to, to report to the hospital or the facility that you're working at on a day-to-day -day basis to deal with the real frontline problems. So thank you. Thank you so much for all it is that you do. Today we're going to work on a Shimano. It's a Triton TLD. It's the 10 and uh, it's an older reel. It's a reel from the late 1980s. It's been around quite some time. It's a lever drag reel. Carlos sent this one in and I'm going to show you how to take this apart and service it. There's nothing wrong with it at the moment other than you'd like it cleaned and serviced. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, I would recommend a couple of things as you get started on your real repair projects. The first one would be to go out and get a schematic if you're not familiar with the uh, design of the reel and you're not quite sure what you're going to see when you open it up. Uh, go ahead and get the schematic. This one was pulled from uh, a website, Mike's Reel Repair. They're a parts reseller up in Vancouver, Canada. And uh, they have a good series of... Um, schematics available to you should you need them. So I re recommend doing that. It's always a good thing to have that on hand as a reference point. I also recommend that you uh, uh, wear a protective glove like I do. Uh, you're never quite sure what's inside or outside these reels so it doesn't hurt to, uh, to take a little preventive measure there. Uh, I work on a lot of reels each day so, you know, it may not be that uh, there's an issue with this particular one, but the next one may be just that, and uh, I keep that glove on for uh, several projects at a time. All right, I'm, I took the uh, retention cap off. Now I'm going to pull the nut cap off. <coughs> that holds the handle on. That's a 10 millimeter. And I'm just going to pull a couple of the things off. I like to take the external parts off first. And I like to take pictures along the way. That's what we're doing in the video here. You don't have to take a video of yours. You can take uh, still shots. You can use a digital camera. You can use your cell phone. Uh, whatever is convenient to you. But I would recommend that you take those pictures along the way because if you get, get to the point where you're struggling somewhere uh, and you forgot a sequence or you have an extra part laying around that you don't quite remember where it went, uh, and you didn't pull a schematic to go look for it, then uh, it's always a good idea to uh, go back and reference the pictures you took at several critical junctures, and that'll help you uh, identify that piece or part or sequence or position or so on. This uh, little preset piece has got a lot of old grease on it, so I'm just going to take care of that right now by wiping that off. And then I just like to nestle it right back where it came from so that I know where that is. And then uh, we can continue removing some. This may or may not come out. It did. There's a little click on the back of this uh, one. It rides in the ridges of this. Just remember that when you go to reinstall, that's kind of how that piece goes. And uh, the rest should be relatively uncomplicated here. This is a bump stock. There's going to be three screws that are going to hold that... Uh, that little ring on there. Two of them are going to have the bump, the little uh, washer with the longer screw. Those go on each side and they stop the lever from going further. So just get those. I use a parts tray as you see behind me. It's nothing more than the bottom of a milk jug. But uh, it keeps all of my pieces and parts in one place and it makes it easy for me to find them on reinstall. Notice the third screw that came out is a flathead tapered screw as opposed to the ones that have the collars. That goes in the center here. You couldn't put the, uh, the bigger screw there because it would interfere with the travel on the, uh, uh, on the lever. Okay, there's a series of set sc screws now for the case. I'm going to take those off. And I lay them on my desk because I'm not quite sure 
if they are the same length or not. And I want to make certain of that before I go put them into my parts tray. And I've learned from experience that uh, there's no set pattern to these. Uh, yes, indeed, they have varying lengths of screws on different models. I just did a pen squall the other day, and uh, that had three different screws in the side case. It had two shorts, two long, and one, I guess you'd call intermediary screw, but where they had the cross blocks, they had one set of screws, and then when they didn't have a cross post, they had a second set of screws. All right, that should loosen up the case. Just want to check behind to make sure that there's no screw behind it. Usually sometimes with these bigger diameter reels there is, but we should be able to pull this off now. And then we can remove the spool. And this is a solid frame. There's nothing much you can do about this one. Uh, if you had a broken frame, I believe you got to replace the whole case. Uh, I was just checking here. I wanted to check the click tongue to see that it has uh, got a good point on it and all. These actually can be replaced. I'm, I'm not sure if we can see in this video here. I'll try and do that. There is a e-clip on here, so you can actually pull this e-clip and get a replacement click tongue if this one was not pointy, but this one's got a good point on it. All you want to do on a click tongue, you put a little bit of oil on that, or you can put some grease. Don't put too much in it's just going to leak out the other side here, but uh, just make sure that that's in good condition and that the click ring is in good condition. That click ring could also be replaced. I, I think there might be a question about the parts availability right now on a 30-year-old reel, but if parts were available, you could replace both. All right, I'm going to just put that off to the side here. Pretty simple setup underneath on this one. It's got a single drive as opposed to uh, dual speed. It has a pinion or spool gear. I'm just going to check that. We're going to use the I'm going to use a pick here. I'm just going to clear the channels here. There's just a little bit of grease that's hanging there where it meshes. I'm going to go ahead and get that out. It doesn't seem dried. It seems like it's in pretty good condition. I'm also checking the teeth here to make sure that they're not bent. Sometimes you'll get some line in here or you'll get a, uh, a uh, another cause that will knock a tooth out of uh, square. And when that happens, you're going to get a grind in your wheel. And at best, at worst, it's going to stop it. But uh, sometimes fighting a big fish, a line, piece of line will snap and get twisted in here or something. And always good to know that it's clean. If you needed a little bit more of an assist, you could take a small brush, like a wire brush, a toothbrush, anything. Knock the rest of it out, but make sure it's nice and clean. Also, I noted that uh, it's not, it's, it's kind of hard to do on this one, but this has a smaller diameter than this one, and the small diameter is going to go in the bearing in the back here. So let's get that out of the way. All right, I think this next piece here is going to be a little bit more difficult to do. There's a collar that goes onto the main gear here. Let's see if I can push it through. I did. So the collar was able to come off. And then there's a little uh, spacer that goes inside that collar. And all I did was I used my weight, I just turned the reel upside down and just kind of used my weight to press. I don't recommend taking a hammer or anything to these. I've seen people do it. And uh, what I've seen happen, unfortunately, is that when they've hammered these things, the threads here bent. So by all means, uh, stay away from the hammers if possible. All right, we have a pretty dirty case here, so it's a good thing the Carlos had asked to be done. We have a spring that's attached here, which is good because I was looking for it as I saw this main gear come out. And we have an anti-reverse dog here that's going to attach to the spring. This all needs a good cleaning. That's kind of what Carlos asked me to do. So let's start with a paper towel, see how much we can get off of that. Most of this is just elbow grease, if you will, and just need to spend some time. I've said this on more than one occasion, what you need for real repair is just kind of patience and a se sense of humor, because things are going to go awry from time to time. I'm checking the teeth again, just like I did on the other gear, making sure that they're all in the right position. 
and there's nothing there that's a problem. I'm taking that brush and cleaning the, the teeth. They all look clean, but we're just going to make certain of that. I'm going to stand that just to one side. We'll come back and lube all of these as we go back to put these together. Cleaning the grease off that anti-reverse. And then we just have a case here that's kind of got a lot of grease and the like in here. So let's just make sure we get, get that cleaned as well. I'm going to use a cotton swab for that. There's a bearing. I want to make sure that it's turning freely, which it is. Just work around the studs here. You could use a, uh, a mild degreaser like a WD-40 or something if you found that you had some stubborn grease stuck on here. This one seems to be in pretty good stead. We're almost done with this. And that, uh, that bearing is packed with grease, so we may just go back and repack it with grease there. If you have the option on bearings to, to grease or to oil, on most of the reels, spinning reels in particular, I'll use an oil because they're going to be subjected to a lot of uh, uh, salt water spray and the like and that'll uh, contaminate the greases but in this case internal case grease is fine we'll go ahead and put some on there as I said it looks like it's pretty packed to begin with here alright we've got a good layer of that in there you want to check your orientation I believe the dog is going to sit this way, but we're going to check. So that's the way your dog should sit. When it's upside down, it's going to sit this way. We're going to transfer that to the case, so it's going to go this way inside the case. And that means that that spring there with a the little notch on it. It's going to hook in. Springs are always fun. And it's going to sit like that. Now right now you can't get that main gear in because this has traveled too far. So what we're going to do is when we go to install the main gear, we're going to pull up on this bar here where you'll have some room to do that. We're going to pull up on the bar so that it frees the dog so that we can put that main gear in. All right, we've cleaned the main gear. Let's go back then and put some grease on that and get it on the teeth. You don't have to get it on every tooth. Good, good amount here and there. And as it travels around, it certainly will spread the grease around. A good amount. It doesn't have to be overflowing. Any excess is just going to get squeezed out. So you don't have to go crazy. And we're going to put some grease onto the shaft. Then we can put the main gear in. And here's what we were talking about before. That main gear is not set because the dog is underneath it. So come over here with your pick. Pull down on that main gear. Or on the dog. And then push in on your main gear. And then we should have it where it's operational. There you go. We can take that cap then. Get that cap back on. Okay, so with the cap on and the main gear riding, we can put one more piece in there, which would be the pinion gear. So let's get a good dose of grease onto that. Also into the one that's going to spin inside your bearing. And we can just install that. And then we can turn our attention to the drag side of this. So the drag usually has a little indication on it. In this case, it's got a very big indication on it. It says unscrew and it's pointing that away, which is counter what the normal uh, screw threading is and that it's going to turn to the right to unscrew. You want to grab your, your spool and you should be able to hand loosen it. It doesn't take any effort for these. 
This is going to show you your drag pressure plate, a couple bearings, and a spring assembly. Make sure that if you haven't taken a picture yet, you take a picture now because this is one of the easiest areas to get the alignment out of sequence. And when you get it out of sequence, it just doesn't perform properly when you're going to put it back in. We're going to remove that seat. You have your pressure plate. You have a washer. You have a, sp I'm sorry, you have a bearing. You have a spring. You have another bearing. And then this shaft is going to be held on back here by two uh, Phillips head screws. I'm going to take that shaft out as well. So I want to remove this first. I want to check to make sure that it's clean under here. And it is. You can see the original decal is actually under here. So everything is fine. I just want to make sure there wasn't any grease or anything else sliding around in here. And this is the coupling that's going to accept the back end of that uh, gear that we just put in on the other side. On this you want to make sure that your, your drag plate is not scarred. And it's nice and smooth. In this case, you can see it's a nice smooth surface. A little bit of grease on there, that's not going to bother anybody or anything. And then we have our spring and our bearing. Now I'm going to take this side out because there's another bearing under here that we want to get to. And we want to make sure that this spool has got the right. Uh, where the shaft and everything is smooth and lubricated. These are very small parts. Pay attention to where you put them. You'll be looking for them if uh, you just kind of haphazardly let them bounce around. That'll remove this assembly now. Again, you want to pay attention to what's on here. Now you don't have to do anything with the stuff over here, but you do have two spool tensioning washers. And you want to pay attention to the orientation. If you did take these out, you want to make sure you know how they are. In this case, they're nested. You can see that there's no gap between them. If you wanted to, these are belt washers. They have a little bit of a curve to them. And you can turn them in a variety of sequences, face to face, side to side, or back to back. That will give you varying tension on the actual lever drag performance. So I'm just going to put this back together here. And we're just going to leave that assembly whole since nothing needs to be done there. And then we have that bearing I was trying to get to. There we go. We brought the bearing and the spacer out on this side. That's going to do the same on the other side here. And this bearing is, is dry, so we want to uh, do our best here to lubricate that. Again, we can use grease or we can use oil. This is internal to the spool, so. It's not going to see a lot of uh, issues, so I'm going to put some grease onto this one. Repack that, put that in, like that. This the washer goes on top between the two, so let's put all of that back onto the stack here. And then I'm just going to take this assembly and put it back in. Line up the holes for the screws. Use a little pick to do that. Let's see how lucky I get with these screws. That's a small screw. The tip of my screwdriver tends to, to hold that one. I think it's a number one screwdriver. Some people ask me from time to time what, uh, what it is. I think it's a number one Phillips. But if you need to, go to micro screwdrivers. You can get relatively inexpensive sets at most. Uh, hardware stores. I have a uh, set here that I uh, purchased from um, uh, Harbor Freight. It's not the most uh, expensive set in the world. I think it was less than ten dollars, but it kind of has the tips that you need. And okay, so once you have the axle in, then you have that bushing that came out, a small washer, and the bearing. And that kind of fell out when I was taking the screws out this way and, and quite honestly I don't know the orientation of it so now's a good time to go to the schematic. This is the part of the assembly we're looking at here. It's uh, part number 74 and 36 and 35. Well 74 says that's the bushing 
and then 36 says that's the washer and then the ball bearing. So this is where a, a schematic is very helpful even if you've worked on the reels a long time and, and maybe you want to trust your memory on it. So the bushing goes in first, then the thrust washer goes, and then the bearing goes. And we want to oil that bearing. And we can place that in there. And we want to make sure it seats into that indentation. Your, um, your drag washer is in good condition. The cross hatching is still on there. There's no significant wear of any kind. Some people want to put uh, drag grease on there. Some don't. You don't uh, need to. Uh, they can run dry and we're going to let this one dry, run dry. Spring was up next. Second washer was up. Our second burring is up. Let's put the oil on that and let's put it on the oil on my desk first. And slip that over the shaft. And we have our pressure plate. It's, it's been cleaned and dried. It's nice and shiny. There's no uh, ruts or anything in this one, so this is in good condition. I'm going to load this one because it's easier to load it and make sure it gets into the cavity this way. There we go. We're in good condition with that. Then we're going to take our cap that holds the assembly in to the spool. Remember we unscrewed in a clockwise direction, so we screw it in a counterclockwise direction to tighten it. And this is just hand tightened. You don't need anything more than that. And there you go. And now we'll spin our, spin our spool shaft just to make sure it's spinning properly, which it is. Now we can mount that in a frame. There's a T connection here and there's a slot in the frame. Just go do a visual on that one. There you go, it's the only way you can get it in. And now we have our side plate to mount. It's that simple. We have our, we've already put the, the bearing, uh, the, the gear in here, the pinion gear. We've already lubed the main gear, pinion gear, bearing. And now as you go to put it in, it's just got to mesh its teeth with the, uh, the carrier in the spool. And generally, if you turn the spool, you can get it to mesh. There we go. And now it's just reversing the process that we started on the way in. And that is to take our case screws, which we have in the parts tray here. There's five of them. They're all the same size, so it doesn't matter which side they go in. And even though I took these out kind of in a circular motion, I'm not going to put them... I'm not going to tighten them up that way. I'm going to tighten them up going uh, cross cross reel. I normally say northeast southwest, but in this case, I got five screws, so there's a different pole in there. So let's just take it as the stars on a or the points on a star we all learned how to draw in kindergarten. And we're just going to go opposites, kind of go up, down, side to side, cross back over, kind of thing. And I'm, I'm just snugging them. I'm not tightening any of them until uh, I get them all down to the point where they're all snug. I want to keep equal tension on the case. I don't want the case binding in any way. And it can do that if you over tighten one side before you're done with the others. Now I'm going to come back and give that last little quarter of a turn there just to make sure that it stays tight. Alright, the case screws are on. I'm just going to spin that spool. Look at that spin. Yeah. Carlos, you got a nice reel here. All those bearings are nice and lubed, spin, spinning the right way. Let's go take our ring then. And when I do the ring, there's a, I just wanted to, <laughs> my mind was playing games on me here. There is a little washer here. There's a plastic washer that did not come off in the assembly. You don't need to do anything with it. I was just checking the backing on this to make sure that uh, we had the washer and that it wasn't missing. We're, we're okay. All right, the best way to do this is to grab your, your lever arm that has the notch in it and put it over the ring before you install the ring. It's just easier to do it that way. I was a little bit surprised that it came off when it did. And then you need to align 
the holes in your trim ring to accommodate your release and your stop. We had the two screws that have the collars on them. They go on each side and again if you got confused and tried to remember where one went or the other just go back to the pictures you took. Of course you're watching my video now so just go back to the video, rewind it and uh, see where they came out if I wasn't descriptive enough. Now we're doing on this side. And we have one more which is the flat screw. That flat screw goes under where I have that uh, travel arm at the moment. Then what I like to do is I'm setting the pre preset. I like to come over to the neutral position. There's little pyramids that ride on this uh, preset arm. I like to get those into the grooves. And this is always a, a little matter of trial and error in terms of, of setting this. But if we do it right, if you put it into the grooves and then you move it over here to the neutral position, generally you've got a good start in terms of how to, how to set this. So if you're, if you're running this way, your spool's turning, your axle isn't, and then you move it up the chain and your axle is, then you know you've got the lever pretty much set properly. There'll be some fine tuning going on here. You might want to tighten this down to the point where you've got it moving there. Come over to the neutral position and you're fine. So, all right, then all, all that's left then is the handle. The handle cap, nut cap. That's a 10 millimeter. If you get the side flat with this hole here, which is going to hold the nut cap, if you get it perpendicular, generally that nut cap will work. That looks like I'm pretty close. And you can get your nut cap on. I'm very close. Put that screw in. And now we'll just give it a final test here just to make sure everything's right. So we're in the neutral position, which is the free spool. We've got a beautifully spinning spool. As we go to first strike position, we should start to see our, our handle turning, but it's not a lot of tension on it. When we go to full strike, you should lock down your, your spool and not be able to turn it by putting pressure on the side. So that's a good starting adjustment there. And uh, Carlos can tune that to whatever his, his specifications are after that. But overall, this is a nice reel. It's an older reel. As we mentioned, it started production in 1987. I think they're still making them today to some de degree. And uh, this one's got all the ball bearings doing the right things. It's got gears with good teeth. And uh, this one's ready to go fishing. So I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like it. If you want to see more of these, please subscribe. If you have a reel that you're... Uh, afraid to work on or just not interested in working on but it needs to be tuned up well please contact me through my email i do provide uh, real repair services by mail and uh, the email follows on the business card at the end of this video so please contact me that way and uh, again if you're a first responder emergency personnel essential personnel whatever your role is in helping all of us in the pandemic thank you thank you thank you and if uh, you're one of the rest of us like me who uh, has no direct role in that, then please stay safe, stay wearing the masks, maintain the social distancing, do what the authorities are asking us to do, and we will all get through this together. So this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.